So hi, everybody. Um, welcome to another Passionistas Facebook Live. Um, this is a very exciting one for me because I am reuniting with my dear old friend, Amy Young, who's down there in the corner. Um, Amy and I went to BU together, graduated uh, 31 years ago this uh, June, and we have not seen each other since that day. Um, we've, uh, you know, connected again on Facebook, we like each other's posts, and we check in every once in a while, but um, this is the first time we've had a conversation in um, a very, very long time. So I'm so happy you're here and so happy to see your face, to see you Thanks in action. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. And um, Amy's here because she's going to talk about the Can Do 5K Fun Run, um, which celebrates how individuals with special needs triumph over challenges every day. And the proceeds from that event are going to go to support My Village Northwest's events and programs. So Amy's going to tell us all about that. And then um, part of the reason Amy is here is because we had a contest in, in relation to our International Passionistas Day. And Amy nominated Jen Heinrich. And so we, we chose them to do this Facebook Live. So they're winners of our one of our contests. And Jen is here to tell us about an organization that she founded called Girls Rugby, um, which empowers girls to reach their potential through sport. Um, so Amy and Jen have known each other for a long time. We'll talk about that. They will both talk about these amazing organizations that they're a part of. And um, we encourage you all to leave questions and comments and we will try and work them into the conversation. Um, and thank you all for joining us. So um, let's start with how you two actually met each other. Tell us that story. <laughs> I'm getting the you go. Yeah, so um, Amy and I both went to a camp called Brown Ledge Camp, which is on Lake Champlain uh, outside of Burlington, Vermont. And um, it's a, you know, all around camp. Uh, Amy and I had very different um, activities that we were engaged at a camp. We crossed over in some things, but our passions kind of lay in different spaces. Um, but ultimately that's kind of the beauty of Brown Ledge is celebrating everybody's uniqueness, their differences, what make, you know, where we align and all that good stuff. And it's an amazing place and um, a space where Amy and I still are engaged in, and talk with our friends from there on a regular basis. So that is how we met back in uh, around 1980. So we've known each other for a long time as well. Uh, that's amazing. So we love to um, start by talk, when, when we talk to women, we like to start by asking them, what are you most passionate about? That's, that's kind of an easy one for me. And it's kind of what's led me to the path of what I'm doing now. But I have found that the thing that makes me tick um, is helping others to transform their lives or to, to, to create something more meaningful in their life. And that's been really what's inspired me and kind of driven me in my later professional years. What am I most passionate about? Um, I'd have to say really currently in my life, I'm most pas passionate about my kids and um, they're both at a phase where they are about to take off in their own unique ways. And um, I'm just really focused and passionate about helping them do that with success. So tell us a little bit more about your kids. Uh, Megan is 18 and is in her freshman year of college in her, from her bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and Sam is, uh, will be 22 this year, and he is an adult who lives with different abilities. Um, and so Meg's flight from the home will be a little bit more uh, the usual uh, path that people are accustomed to, and Sam's flight from home is uh, in formation. And my husband and I really are hoping to um, find a way for him to be an active, engaged member of his community, even though the community isn't necessarily ready to support him, mm. um, but working towards creating that for him. So he has, uh, he was born with cerebral palsy. He also has autism and um, he communicates non-verbally and, um, and he's a beautiful young man. 
I was just going to say those very words. I've only been able to connect with him through Facebook and photos and videos, but I just, I love his face. I love watching him run the 5k, get, you know, the videos he have been posting are just so awesome. Like he just seems like such a great kid. And, um, so I hope to get to meet him someday in person. So well, tell us, so go ahead. When uh, Meg's actually going to college outside LA, and so maybe Sam and I will be down in your neck of the woods someday. That's awesome. Where's she going to go? Excellent. She's going to Scripps College, which is an all women's college in Claremont. Oh, awesome. Okay. I love Claremont. We go out there. We, we go out that way sometimes. So if you ever need, if she ever needs somebody, Aww, just know that you. half an hour away, happy to go to Claremont. Aww, Seriously. You're so sweet. Thank it's you. It's true. Any, anything. If she just needs some adults to take her out and buy her a meal just let her know because <laughs> that's oh, what every college sure, kids so wants she might be knocking <laughs> on your door more than you want them. that's fine <laughs> totally fine seriously we're here for her yeah yeah neither of us have kids and we were hoping our nephew was going to come out to school out here and he didn't so <laughs> we're always willing to take in a another person's kid to help them out because we don't have to do that very often. <laughs> I'll be sure to send so, along her dietary restrictions. But please yes. do. <laughs> we got like all kinds of gluten free and vegan shit around here. So take care. <laughs> yeah. So now tell us a little bit about girls rugby. First of all, can you tell us what rugby is, because I don't think I know. I think I have this vision of what it is, but I'm not sure I do. And that's a, that's, I mean, that's a really, that's a fair question. I think it's um, it's definitely a non-traditional sport for the United States, maybe less so in other countries. And I think people have preconceived notions about what it is. Um, our programming is not the traditional full contact version of the game. It is a flag uh, version of the game. Um, but it's played with a ball that looks very similar to a football. Um, it incorporates kind of the skills from a lot of other sports. So there are basketball skills involved. I mean, so there's a catch pass, running lines. There's a little bit of everything that's involved um, with the sport of rugby. But the beautiful thing I think about rugby and, and why we kind of chose rugby to deliver the curriculum that we, that we deliver is because of its inclusive nature. So it's really truly the sport for girls for all shapes and sizes and really a sport that values all shapes and sizes for young girls which I think is a really positive um, you know, perspective these days. And obviously we wanna create more opportunities for girls to be, to find themselves in those types of communities. So it doesn't have the kind of traditional body type maybe that some other sports have. Um, so you find a little bit of everything, which is beautiful, so. So why it's such an unusual sport yeah. for the United States and for girls, like what yeah. drew you to that particularly? Yeah, so my, I actually, so my background, um, out of college, I, I was in marketing and advertising for years. I actually grew up playing a lot of sports. Rugby was never one of them. I played soccer at Vanderbilt University and, and kind of continued to play tennis and a whole bunch of other things. And I fell into rugby when I met my now husband. Um, so a long time ago um, and kind of uh, fell in love with the sport and kind of the inclusive nature, as I mentioned, and the community and all that good stuff. But the, the idea for girls rugby actually came out of a phone call between three women who had this shared passion for using sport to transform lives. So we had all been connected over the years through our work in rugby um, and particularly around, you know, creating greater accessibility for young people. Um, and then the, kind of the next thing we knew, we were sitting in San Diego down in your neck of the woods, um, dreaming and planning about, you know, where we could use rugby as a tool to teach life skills um, and also create greater programming for girls everywhere in the US um, and delivered in a way that would leave them feeling more confident and empowered to kind of take on the world. So, you know, really the inspiration came from knowing that girls who play sports have higher levels of confidence um, and self-esteem. They have lower levels of depression. They have better academic outcomes. They also learn important life skills um, like teamwork and goal setting and you know, other types of achievement oriented behaviors that are, as we have all learned, are essential to success. So, um, and part of that was there was a, a 2011 report um, the Women's Sports Foundation had put out saying that there was a disparity of about 4 million fewer opportunities for girls to participate in sports as compared to boys. So while progress has been made since, you know, since 2011, um, the disparity in access is still pretty great and still in the millions. 
So with girls rugby, we really wanted to create more opportunities for girls to participate in sport and deliver this curriculum that teaches important life skills that'll serve them both on and beyond the beyond the rugby pitch. So awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, we were we were and still are indoor people. Um, so we did not play a lot of sports. We right. played in the pool. That was like as athletic as we got. Um, right. And I remember when I was working in more of a, you know, uh, corporate entertainment setting, like uh, having a conversation with other women one day, like we didn't learn to play on teams when we were little. We did yeah. not, that was not a skill that we were taught because we right. didn't, we were just of that age where girls were kind of starting to play sports, but right. not really. Yeah. And I know I, I miss some really important life lessons from yeah. Yeah. not doing that. And I, you know, I really defined myself from an early age as an athlete. Like I started competing at the age of five and that was just kind of my thing. And I played everything I could possibly play. Um, you know, but one of the things that we wanted to do kind of with girls rugby is we also having played for a lot of different coaches and a lot of different teams is you realize that not every experience is the same and not everybody kind of delivers those really key life skills in, in a meaningful way, or, or in some cases, you know, placing winning at all costs above other things, which really is not the greatest message that we should be, you know, sending. And so we've been really intentional about our curriculum. We roll out this, it's a seven week program. Um, and we have this word of the week that we, that we incorporate. And so it's a different value each week and there's different activities that go along with that. And then obviously they're at rugby practice as well, but we find different ways for them to be able to incorporate um, and hone kind of both their rugby skills and these life and leadership skills as a part of the curriculum, um, just so that we can ensure that they're getting this positive, the positive experience that we really want them to get. And that they're really kind of grasping that, oh, I'm not just learning these life skills because I'm being a part of this program, but they're, we're being very intentional about what those skills are and creating activities around that. So they can kind of flex those muscles. A lot of times, you know, girls at a young age, they don't get a chance to, to flex those muscles. And we want to create opportunities for them to be able to do that. So a little bit different than your your traditional youth sports organization. Yeah, that's, great. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. So what are some of those words? What are some of the words that you use? So our, our values, I mean, there's, there's 32 of them, but our values <laughs> are around um, leaders. So leadership, empowerment, achievement, development. Um, so, you know, and, and we've got activities around with, so there's one, um, uh, respect is one. And I, and I, I love to tell this story because we had an eight-year-old girl in our program. We were a national organization, so we have a program in Colorado. We had this eight-year-old girl who the word of the week was respect. And um, she came home and she told her mom, whose mom passed it on to us, which we're so grateful for, that she was at school and there was a little girl who was being bullied by her classmates. And she was like, I don't think that they are being very respectful to this little girl. And she went over and she stood up for this little girl in front of these other classmates and her mom said, well, my gosh, like, I'm so proud of you. And you know what, you know, you know, what, how, how did you have the courage to do this? She's like, oh, well, at rugby this week, the word of the week was respect. And we learned that we should respect ourselves, but also respect others. And when others aren't being respected, we should stand up for them. And I was like, yes, you know, like <laughs> those things that those are the little things. Like, I wish I had all the stories, but those are the things that make such a difference in somebody's life. And not only for the little girl who stood up, but the little girl who was stood up for, and also, to those people who are behaving in a way that's not kind, um, maybe hopefully they learned something that there's a better way to, to approach things. So, um, so that's kind of, th those, are the, those are the things like I, I'm passionate about rugby and I absolutely love the sport of rugby um, and love to have these girls being active, but those stories are the ones that really get me. And those are the things that fuel my fire for sure. Yeah, awesome. yeah. Um, so Amy, tell us a little bit about My Village Northwest, because that's kind of the, overarching organization in, in relation to the can do gun, right? Well, it is, it's our, the can do 5k is our fundraiser for my village Northwest, but I think I'm going to start with a story okay. um, that, uh, so the can do 5k, we typically do, we do it at the end of every April and it's outdoor, but for the past two years, we've done a virtual race, but I'm going to tell a story from the actual race day. Um, there was this young woman, so the focus of the can do is people of all abilities can participate and our race really focuses on the success of the kids and um so everybody hangs out there i mean we we have uh runners who really are going for the time and we have awards for the people who want to have their times and um 
but uh, the focus is really on the young kids who wouldn't typically um, think of doing that. And, but now for 12 years, we've had this wonderful community of young adults of all abilities and a community coming together, businesses and families, extended families, and just the, the schools, the local um, school districts all showing up to celebrate these kids. And there was this young woman, it was raining. This one when we were, the race was already breaking down and I think this was about three years ago, maybe. And um, there was a young woman who set a goal for herself to, and she'd been doing the race since she was tiny. And maybe she was 10 or 11 this year that I'm talking about. And um, the, but the biker came in. So we have a sweet biker at the end of the race, just let you know, everybody's come in. And I remember thinking to myself, where's the sweet biker? The sweet biker never came up to me. Mm. And I was just thinking, I just missed it. And every, we were breaking down and then the sweet biker comes in and he was like, there's still a family out there. This young woman had set the goal of, I want to do the whole race in my walker this year, but she wanted to walk it. Um, and then she would take a break every time she needed it. And I think it took her one hour and 49 minutes or something. I can't, we have a picture of the time and her name is Hannah. And the, those of us who were left, it's pouring rain. We all go up to the finish line and she walks across the finish line. And, you know, we're all like, Woo, go Hannah, go Hannah. And she was so proud of herself. And, um, but the, the thing I really love about that story is another friend's daughter um, had her poster hanging over her, cause she, the next year she was our um, poster child, I think. Mm -hmm. Cause we found her story so inspiring. There's that can do attitude, really. Yeah. I can do it in my own way, in my own time, on my own terms. And, um, and I can still be celebrated. And um, her daughter has the poster hanging in her room to inspire her to have that can do attitude. So for me, that's really awesome. what the can do encompasses and just teaching the larger community through this event. Um, let's celebrate people of all abilities and how can we make accommodations in our communities to welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then my village Northwest, the can do fund 5k funds my village Northwest is an organization that started back in um, 2003 maybe um, a bunch of moms their kids were in kindergarten um, and you know kids don't get asked a birthday party I mean I they could go on and on about the social isolation yeah, yeah. and uh, so this group of moms came together with a pair educator and decided to create um, family outings and family connection and um, and so then over time, we became our, in 2013, I think, 20, uh, 2016, we became our own nonprofit, My Village Northwest. We were kind of housed by another organization prior to becoming our own nonprofit. And um, currently we are working towards creating coalitions with local businesses, um, but we got kind of derailed by the pandemic. Mm. But we were planning to bring local businesses together and kind of have this dream luncheon where um, like kind of a speed dating luncheon <laughs> where you throw two organizations together and they say, well, if we had money, we would do blah and then go sit yeah. with the next partner. And if we had money, we would do whatever and how to create opportunities into the local um, businesses for That's people. Really smart. Of different what a great groups. idea. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And so that, you know, hopefully things are starting to open up and we'll have our little coalition. And then we were going to, after that brainstorm, kind of fund whatever ideas really rose to the surface. So, that's so cool. um, and we're doing oh, other stuff, really, but that's the main that's really focus right that's now. Amazing. So now how did COVID affect the race this year? How, what's it going to look like? Again, we're going virtual. Um, mm -hmm. And so, uh, I'm just, there, there's a, um, there's the can do 5k Facebook page. And then there's a can do 5k virtual Facebook page. And I've been doing a 30 day challenge with Sam. I think we're on day 20. Um, and, uh, the race itself is the last week of April. So kickoff will be the Saturday or the Friday. 
I have my dates all messed up. <laughs> yeah, twenty. Yeah, I have the twenty fourth. And the then first. I think May first is the yeah. the last mm -hmm. closing day. So we'll have kickoff um, events on the Friday. We'll have closing ceremony on the Saturday, and different businesses are offering awards. So if anybody out there wants to register and sign up and have some fun, um, join us. Um, yeah. And they can either Excellent. join Team Sam, which is kicking ass, I have to say. Yep. You're like number third <laughs> with a bullet on the chart. You're, you know, <laughs> um, but Or they can do it on their own, right? Either way is, is OK. Yeah, you can do it as an individual. You can just donate. Um, uh, the local PTAs can, if they get 50 registrations or more, uh, part of the race pro proceeds will go to that school to create a inclusive opportunities within their school. Because um, uh, so often, so many people want to include, but there's a problem of funding and knowledge, really. Um, yeah. So we really want to try to create those opportunities for communities that have the desire to make a difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we've been obviously trying to, you know, cover all these different women, women topics of equality and women's equality. And last year when we started the summit, we were like, okay, we need to touch on as many different things as we can. And we really, um, we, we met a woman with a disability named Selene Luna, who was in one of our events. And she really has been educating us over the last year, um, just about disability rights. And it's become a major passion of ours because it feels like an area where it's still, you know, I'm not saying enough progress has been made in a lot of areas. Obviously, we have a long way to go on a lot of topics, but disability rights really seem to be uh, overlooked a lot. And, you know, as Solette and Kara Reedy point out to us all the time, 26% of the people on the planet have a disability of some kind. And many, many people are going to end up with a disability as they age, even if they're healthy when they're young. Um, so, you know, it's, it's in, even if you need to look at something from a selfish point of view to do something good, it's in <laughs> many people's best interest to be addressing these topics. And, and we're shocked at how many laws still exist, like people with disabilities can be paid less legally in so many states. And, you know, it, it, it's shocking to us how poorly people with disabilities are treated. So we appreciate what you're doing. And, you know, we're always here to be allies to people and help spread the word in any way, because this has got to be the next big topic that everybody jumps on board and does something about. <laughs> as far well, as I suppose we can't, we can't change what we don't see. And yeah, right. people with disability honestly were hidden and yep. um yeah. you know if sam had been born in the 70s he would have been sent away mm -hmm. and um and when he was born and many people said well where are you going to send him to me wow. um as a residual like an older population would yes, right. have that idea of well there are places that take care of them mm -hmm. and um so yeah it's a complicated subject and uh, much like in the women's movement, it's the suffragettes, it's all the women before mm -hmm. that paved the way, and it's the mm -hmm. um, people with disability and the self-advocates who have been out there fighting the good fight, um, you know, over the long haul. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. None of, yeah, none of this is coming from nowhere. There are people who right. laid the groundwork. Yeah. Yeah, and it needs to be more representation in media, which is what our, our uh, one of our passionistas, Cara Reedy, is doing. She she uh, works with an organization called Disability Media Alliance Project, and she's trying to get more representation in media, you know, um, on screen, but also just people behind the scenes. You know, she was saying that a lot of the even the reality tv shows um she's a little person and a lot of the reality tv shows with little people have approached her about being on the show and she's like well you know what kind of you know who who's, the, who's on the crew who's producing it are there disabled people on the crew and they're like no we're trying to find them and she's like 
well, they're everywhere. They're easy to find if you look, you know, so she's, she's mm -hmm. trying to, um, to work with that side of it and get more representation because it is true what you said, you know, you can't fix what you don't see. And even the most well-intentioned of us are not aware of the problems sometimes. So well, we need even, to, there I mean, needs to be to, more awareness. Not to, but even on our own board, we currently mm -hmm. don't have somebody with a disability serving or with different abilities serving on our own board. And we want that, mm -hmm. um, yeah. but it's just, um, you know, progress keep. Yeah. So if anybody out there is interested, and actually we are trying to grow our board overall. People mm -hmm. who um, have a passion to yeah. um, create opportunities for people. We should hook you up with Kara because she may, Kara yeah. may know people oh, yeah. in your neck yeah. of the woods and mm -hmm. that's good. a great idea. Love her. Yeah, we'll hook yeah. you with guys up for sure. Thank you. Yeah, of course. That's what we're here That's for. what we do. <laughs> that is what we do. <laughs> so I want to hear more about rugby. Um, so, so what are kind of the, what are the age groups of the girls that are part of your program, and where where are the, are the kind of hubs right now? Yeah. So our current focus is on girls in grades two through eight. So it's that flag version of the game in grades um, two through eight. And we actually ran, so we're a relatively young organization. Our first programs were in the fall of 2018. Um, and we ran three pilot programs, happened to be where the three founders were living at the time where we were engaged in rugby. So in Oregon and Southwest Washington, down in San Diego and in uh, the Denver, Colorado area. And we have expanded since then, um, obviously with COVID, we are actually back out and, and kicking off programs now, um, but only in select areas where kind of we could implement our COVID protocols and ensure, you know, all of that we're adhering to the CDC guidelines and kind of all that good stuff. Um, so we're in five states right now. So we're in California, Oregon, Washington, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Colorado, um, and I feel like I'm missing one, but uh, we're expanding into North Carolina. We're going to be in Chicago in the fall. We're going up into Canada. So our first province, we're going to be up in Manitoba. Um, but my, my partners and I, we are all um, volunteers at this point. So scaling um, creates some intrinsic challenges when it's a volunteer organization. Obviously, we're actually paying our program coordinators and program managers that are running our programs on the ground. Um, but we want to be really intentional about the way that we scale our programs too. So there is rugby in the United States. There are state rugby organizations that kind of govern the youth and high school game across the country. And we're really selecting, um, we're being, that's part of the equation of where we go. We want to make sure that we don't create these programs in a silo so they can kind of come through our program. And then if they want to continue either playing touch rugby or full contact rugby, that they have pathways where they can go into a state rugby organization that's running programs for girls. Um, and so that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at. So we, we didn't really know how quickly it would take off or if it would, and it kind of, uh, you know, exploded on us a little bit. So now we're just kind of managing that growth and it's, it's a good problem to have. That's for sure. Okay. Yeah. So how can girls get involved with the program? Um, so we do have a website and the website is girlsrugbyinc.com. And there's information there about our, our program, who we are, what we do, the background, a little bit about the curriculum and kind of what the experience looks like. Um, and then each of the locations. So um, unfortunately, you know, we're not in every state yet. Uh, hopefully, you know, someday soon that will, that will be the case. But, um, you know, again, we just want to be really intentional about how we, how we scale and making sure that we, you know, maintain the integrity of the program. So, but yes, girlsrugbyinc.com. Awesome. And I just put that in, I put your website, Facebook and Instagram in the comments awesome. in case anybody wants to click on a link over there. Awesome. Um, Amy, we have a question for you, which is there going to be a live feed of any kind of people doing the race? Will people be able to see people in action? Um, currently, that's a very good question. Currently, <laughs> we are um, pre-recording some items and then on the kickoff and the closing, I believe there will be a live MC. Um, but we haven't, we have 12 days, 15 days to figure that out, how we're exactly <laughs> going to do that. <laughs> um, but there will be something. We're in, there's social media um, contest, the, you know, best selfie gets an award. Uh, 
again, I don't have it in front of me, but we have different <laughs> awards we're going to do and encouraging people to post on the can do virtual 5k race. Um, there is an actual course in Bothell, Washington. People can go, like, well, my family and I will go walk that course. Um, other people, they can walk a treadmill. You, you can do it anywhere, anywhere planet earth, really. You, like, you can walk, run, roll, and um, post your picture to the, the can do virtual Facebook page and just say, yay, I did it. And um, registration will go to, um, you know, another program we do every Christmas, we have special Santa where we serve um, 100 plus families who have children with different abilities to have a private sitting with Santa, because mm -hmm. the malls can be a little too crazy and overwhelming. And this year, obviously, we couldn't meet in person. So we did a Santa drive by and we drove oh, to 100 cool. homes and knocked on kids doors and Santa said hello. Um, and so the, you know, the funds support that and, uh, funds will support community grants for, uh, when we're, the world opens up and it seems to be opening up again, people can apply for a, a grant to, um, uh, so we have a mom's group right now that applied for a grant. They get together and support each other. Uh, there's another, um, group of, uh, families of Asian descent, descent who wanted to create their own group and have their own support. Um, another group was at a local church. And so we're really trying to create kind of just this grassroots supporting families. The families get to determine what do we need? How can we break down the barriers of social connection? And then we try to support them. So that's where the funds go to currently. That's awesome. And, and tell us what the opening and closing events are all about. What happens oh, right. during That's those? Where that conversation started. Um, the <laughs> opening events, there will be every year we give My Village Awards. So uh, identifying businesses who um, are supportive of people with different abilities. Uh, um, there are three different awards. So we'll present those awards. So I'm actually going to have some Zoom conversations and record them. Uh, other were other, um, each year we have a different child who's on the poster and I've been interviewing them. And so their interviews will be posted. Um, and so I'd say there's probably be about 30 minutes really of the mm -hmm. race opening and race closing. So it's a race week. So people have a whole week. So you don't have to get up at god awful early in the morning and, start line. <laughs> and if it's pouring on race day you can do it on monday you don't have to you, so in that way it's kind of nice and um and, and we'll just so we'll have the award ceremony yeah. that's great awesome. what would you both say your biggest challenge has been in this work that you've been doing and how did you overcome that challenge <laughs> I, I would say, um, you know, the biggest challenge for us is um, just a general awareness that it's an opportunity for girls. Um, when we first started looking at building girls rugby and what we wanted that to look like, we did a lot of Googling and searching on the, the internet and we would try all the different search engines and all different ways to, to kind of Google girls in, in rugby in the United States. And undoubtedly we would get um, women's national team pictures, men's national team pictures. Um, typically we would get like, um, you know, bikini football with the pads, you know, and like there just was not that whole idea of if you can see it, you can be, it just really didn't exist for girls. And so we have been really intentional about um, creating assets and um, opportunities for girls to see themselves. So making sure that we're capturing our girls that are that are truly all shapes, sizes, backgrounds, what have you, um, so that they can see themselves in this and say, oh, this is an opportunity for me. I see myself in this. And so that parents can say, oh, this is an opportunity for my daughter. Um, and just kind of the perception of what rugby is. And, you know, for me, having played mainstream sports my whole life, it was, um, you know, I learned a lot of amazing things being an athlete, growing up an athlete. Um, but a lot of times it's kind of like you win, you lose, you go home. And the beautiful thing about rugby 
um, is that it's this sense of community, right? So it's the only sport that I know of where win or lose afterwards, uh, let's say you and I, Amy, played on different teams um, and I might need to know something about you at practice on Monday from the social that we had afterwards. So we sit down, we have a meal together, you hang out, the coaches you know, might do speeches, the captains might do speeches and or whatever. And, and it's this whole idea of building a sense of community and camaraderie and showing respect and being a good sport. So kind of all of those things. And I think getting that information out. Um, so the awareness, not only that it is for girls and what does it look like and, and building those assets so that girls can see themselves in the sport, but also making sure that people really understand what it's all about. Like our, our last day of the season is not your traditional, um, uh, championship. We actually have a family daughter day. So parents and guardians can, or brothers and sisters will have an opportunity uh, girls will play first, and then they'll have an opportunity to go on the field with their brothers and sisters and cousins and moms and dads and have an opportunity to participate. It might look a little different this year with this season with COVID, but that's the intention is about building that sense of community and belonging and um, a support structure. Um, so just a little bit different. So I think it's just that general awareness um, that visibility piece and, and kind of getting the word out that it exists and this is an opportunity, you know, great opportunity for girls to participate in. How about you, Amy? I could just say ditto to all that. That last <laughs> phrase you just said, you know, social connection. I, I can't remember how you phrased it, but really ultimately that is, that it's really difficult to do. And um, honestly, there've been so many challenges starting from the day Sam was born to um, and so many gifts and things to celebrate. But Amy, a little bit of what you were talking about in terms of the, the way my awareness has grown to this marginalized segment of society that um, none of us know about um, or we're starting, actually we're really starting to know about, but then, okay, now the real work starts. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's so mm -hmm. many people who are like, sure, Sam can participate. But you're like, there's a lot of work and framing that needs to happen for that to actually be successful. And that mm -hmm. costs money and that takes patience and, um, and willingness. And, and, and that's really challenging. That's, yeah. really, that's really challenging to um, figure out how to, okay, people see now, I now see people with disability, mm -hmm. right? I see right. it, but yeah. it's a different game altogether to create opportunity and true inclusion. Right. You know, it's interesting, Amy, one of the things that we had been working toward when we were um, heading into, unfortunately heading into COVID was there's a, a strong, well, one of our program coordinator actually here in Oregon um, is very heavily involved with the Special Olympics. And so she and I have had a lot of conversations. We happened to be in Brazil when COVID hit crazy on this exchange for advancing the playing field and empowering girls through sport and had to fly back. And we have all these conversations there about you know, we've got this programming, we talk about rugby as being this inclusive sport, which I truly have seen it over and over again. But I'm like, how are we, how are we being truly inclusive, right? What does that mean? Um, and we talked about developing a program for, um, in partnership with this Southwest Washington Special Olympics group. But it was interesting to me to understand, thank you, but it was interesting to me to, to understand like you were just talking about, there's all the framing that has to happen, right? And then not every athlete is the same, right? So one athlete might be able to participate on their own. One might need to have a buddy with them. One, you know, it, and so creating different programming that meets the needs of all of those children in that community was gonna be a really interesting undertaking. And I started thinking about it from my lens. And this is why that education piece and what you're doing, what other people in this arena are doing is so important to educate because I was like, okay, so when we roll out the curriculum and I started thinking about our curriculum and how you communicate that information. And she's like, okay, well, what happens if they're nonverbal, right? And, or what happens if they can, they want, they need to see it happen, right? So it's getting from point A to point B rather than saying run from point A to point B. It's like, no, you have to demonstrate what that looks like. So then, you know, and all of those things, I was like, this is gonna be amazing, but I'm excited for that challenge. We have to wait a little bit, obviously with COVID um, before we can kind of uh, re-engage on that, but I'm excited to bring that to fruition. I think that's gonna be interesting. And then maybe it's something that can be um, replicated across the country, right? Like we, we test it here and see, how, how we make it happen, but um, but you and I should should probably talk so that I can educate myself a bit a bit more in that in that arena. That's awesome, and awesome. I have a lot of ideas awesome. in that regard. Good. So let's good, good, good. That's exciting. Cool. Excellent. 
That's so good. See? <laughs> well, and it's funny, and I'll, I'll say one other thing. When you were just talking about the board and um, having representation on your board, that was, I just had a board meeting last week, and that was something I brought forward was, hey, you know, we're all a bunch of adults on this board, but we represent a bunch of girls. So now we're going to bring in young girls to be, a, I mean, we talk about leadership and, and you know, those types of opportunities. And granted, they'll bring a different skill set to the table, but I think they'll bring a really interesting and unique perspective for us that's going to be great to consider because, again, we're looking at it with our lens and we need to look at it through their lens. Um, so I love, I love that you said that that's something that you guys are working towards. That's definitely something we're working towards as well. That's excellent. Yeah. yeah, we are planning, already planning yeah. our summit for next summer. And uh, last year we had our 12 year old niece was one of our speakers. Um, oh, she wow. started a podcast and she's a kick-ass feminist at 12 years old. She's amazing. just amazing. Um, and uh, so what we, we really felt this year, we wanted to expand on that. So we're thinking the same thing, like how can we get you know, we want to maybe do a panel with young girls on it. We want to get the perspective of the young girls and what they want to see for their future, because that's really what this is all about. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and we, we have that. an intern and we're going to have a college intern and she's going to do a, a panel now too. So that we get Fantastic. That age group in there. Yeah. That's yeah. great. That's great. So how can we be advocates to both of your communities? what can we do to, what can people who are watching do to support you guys in general and in terms of the disability community i know amy you were saying kind of helping sam's get out and fly and and that involves the community being supportive so how can the community be supportive in general uh, to that to those needs i mean really what jen just said sums it up that everybody's different. There's no, I think the reason it hasn't happened is because nobody knows how to really make it happen. There's no McDonald's recipe. Um, uh, but I do believe that, um, I do believe it's possible. Um, and people infinitely more intelligent than I <laughs> um, could create those frameworks, could create that curriculum. Yeah, so that businesses, um, I mean, currently lots of businesses, um, the state creates contracts with like grocery stores and Fred Meyer and, and um, I'm sure you all have seen someone of a different ability who's a greeter at Walmart or a bagger um, and their job coaches and all of that stuff is really important. Um, but uh, the demand is high and the um need, opportunity the opportunity is small yeah and um and so it just creates more thought and intention so i mean jen when you were talking about as you upsize or as you what was the word you use yeah. as you scale um <laughs> so it, the, to scale uh people Full inclusion to bring that to scale um, is expensive. Yeah. Um, so really, I think a large part of it is funding. Yeah. yeah. So if people want to help in our local community and our small little nonprofit, sign up for the Can Do 5K, and um, we'll use those funds to try to do what we can in our own little backyard in our part of the world um uh because that's what we are we're a really grassroots local organization um and and a macro level um i love here i mean jen just that you're talking about oh grow are we really inclusive i mean the more as a society we all ask ourselves those questions and we begin awareness so then there's the willingness right. but then you have to do the work um so really that's Get willing, educate yourself, and then ask, how can I make it possible? Right. And I think the beautiful thing is that when you start asking those questions, it opens your eyes and it opens the, the ideas start to flow. And the, and you said, you know, for me, and yes, there, there are some, some things that we would have to implement. Um, but for the most part, I see our programming as long as we can deliver an effective product, right? As long as we can deliver like, to some extent, keep the programming intact, but deliver it in a way that's going to be meaningful for those kids 
to participate in the program. Like that's the thing. And so for me, it's, I need to know more. I need to know what that looks like. I need to understand what meaningful means. I need to under, you know, and a kind of all of those pieces, right? So that I can understand what, how to, how to kind of reframe my own expectations for what that might look like. Um, but I don't think that, I don't think that the cost, I don't, for us at least, I don't see that cost is gonna be a barrier. So for me, I, I mean, because everything, uh, obviously the funding piece is, is huge for any nonprofit organization, right? So the more money we have, the, the, the better work we can do and the, the broader our reach can be and kind of, you know, all that good stuff. But, but I, I see this for us, I'm excited about it because I see this for us as just kind of a, um, a natural extension. And, you know, the beautiful thing about rugby too, is there are already rules for wheelchair rugby and, and granted, not all kids are in wheelchairs, but there's, there's already, we've already gone down that path. There's a, there's a blind, um, uh, deaf rugby. There's, there's all these different rules for all these different variations of the sport already. Um, and so this is again, just kind of how do we reframe this and how do we deliver this in a meaningful way that's going to make an impact on that, um, in our case, little girl, but little girls and little boys, so they get to participate and feel included. Um, and that to me, I think is really important. It's something we, we, you know, we need to be intentional about creating. So I'm excited. And then about they'll that. all grow up and it'll all make sense to them. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Totally. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the grassroots thing is so important. I know from talking to um, Santina Muha, who has done a few events with us, um, she's in a wheelchair and you know her advice was just like if you're in a restaurant and you see that they don't have a wheelchair accessible bathroom say something right you know it, it doesn't affect you personally but if enough people say to them that that's an issue for them that they have a problem with the fact that you're not accessible the restaurant's not going to want to lose business and they're gonna take that seriously right so it does feel like e each little incremental thing that every person can do that, you know, helps chip away at the bigger issues. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Excellent. So tell us again, both of you, where people can find you and, and you know, websites, social media handles. Go ahead, Anne. <laughs> we are, you can find My Village Northwest at myvillagenorthwest.org. Um, the can do 5k can do 5k.org and if you want join us on team sam um and uh yeah facebook can do 5k or the virtual page where you can post your own progress excellent yeah, team sam and we're at girlsrugbyinc.com and like Amy, we're on, so we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook, we're attempting to be on Twitter, we're learning the Twitterverse, it's, it's a foreign, it's a foreign concept, um, but then each of our locations actually has their own um, social media handles as well, so like Girls Rugby in Oregon is Girls Rugby Oregon or Girls Rugby San Diego or Girls Rugby Pennsylvania, so yeah, um, but yes, you can find Excellent. us in all those, in all those spaces. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you both so much for taking the time out of your days yeah. to do this. And um, yeah. Amy, it's so good to see your face and to oh, actually to hear your you voice. Too. And your so voice. Cool. Yeah, it's been and, a long uh, time. Thank you both of you for doing this. What a great, what great fun work you two are doing. Yeah. Thank you. We're very lucky and we get to do it together, which is, uh, makes it even better. Yeah. But um, we're always here for you guys. So anything that comes up that you need promoting and spreading the word don't hesitate to reach out so that know. we can do that awesome. and um hopefully we'll see you in la and uh or in claremont and i'm serious about meg if she needs anything thank you, thank you. <laughs> we're a phone call away yeah okay. thank you ladies i i it's such important work you're doing and i just am so appreciative that that you're shining a light on it and i'm appreciative that amy you took the time to to nominate girls rugby and and then i get to spend you know 45 minutes with you ladies. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's a good way to spend the day. Excellent. That's exactly <laughs> excellent. Yeah. All right. You too. Thank you so well, much. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye.